Back in July of 2020, I did a video sharing my thoughts on when you should use Unraid or a NAS unit. In today's video, I'd like to revisit this topic, but also include TrueNAS in the discussion to help you decide which solution is right for you. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications icon. And if you find this video useful, please give it a like as it does help support the channel. If you follow my channel, you know I don't make a lot of these opinion-based videos. I recently have been using and testing TrueNAS and I realized that the choice that we use nowadays isn't really that straightforward. With some NAS vendors like QNAP and future versions of Unraid, as well as TrueNAS supporting ZFS, it becomes even more important that we know the difference between these three solutions before deciding what to use. This is based on my own requirements, opinions, and experience, and it's really meant to help you as a guide to decide what's right for you. Let's first talk about these technologies have in common. For starters, they all have some level of expandability, meaning I can add more storage capacity up to the limitations of my hardware. And they all use some form of data redundancy. And if they're configured correctly, these solutions will pro provide you with at least the ability to recover from a single drive failure, depending on some different factors. This is mostly where the similarity ends, as each approach is quite different. NAS units in general, such as a QNAP, often use RAID as their primary storage technology, while NAS vendors such as Synology do have an option to use hybrid solutions. Though NAS devices are expandable, RAID devices such as most NAS units can only be expanded by using the same size drives. Others, such as Synology, can use different size drives, but as a, at a significant cost of performance. Storage devices that run Unraid use a parity protected array, which allows you to use a variety of different size hard drives to form a protected array, with the only limitation being that your parity drive needs to be the equal to or larger than any other drive in the system. You can expand your storage very easily just by adding drives, and you're mainly limited by licensing and the number of drive controllers on your system. In contrast, the storage devices such as TrueNAS use a ZFS file system, which does allow for a very configurable redundancy and does offer expandability. However, their approach is quite different. I did a video on ZFS if you want to find out more about it, but in general, it uses a storage pool that's made up of one or more drive arrays called VDEVs. The advantage of this solution is performance. When you add multiple VDEVs to a storage pool, the storage performance goes up and each array or VDEV is written to at the same time. However, you can't expand a single array or VDEV, so expansion has to be done by adding additional VDEVs or arrays. For example, if you have three 2 terabyte drives in a RAID Z1, you get one drive for redundancy and two drives for storage giving you a total of four terabytes of storage. If you want to expand that, you can't just add one drive or expand it to six terabytes as you would in a RAID unit. So I have to add another array or VDEV to the pool. So in this example, I'd have to add three more drives, giving me two more drives for storage and one more drive for redundancy for a total of eight terabytes. The disadvantage, of course, is it took me six drives to do it. And since I have two different arrays, I lose one parity, parity drive for each array. So let's get into really why I created this video and talk about which solution is really right for you. Again, this is strictly my opinion in hopes that you'll provide you with a foundation to help you decide what, what solution is best for you. Let's start off with NAS units. In my opinion, NAS units are best suited for the average user. They offer support from the manufacturer, they're off-the-shelf devices, and they typically would uh, come with uh, multiple apps that let you do just about anything and probably a few things that you shouldn't do. The learning curve for a NAS is typically less than the other solutions and the performance depending on your hardware configuration can be really excellent. The downside is you're limited to the number of drive bays that are in the unit and that the price can be fairly high depending on your particular needs. For me I still use three NAS units. One of them is still my primary central storage where all of my data sets as well as where I do my video editing from. If you're a little bit more of an enthusiast, Unraid is an awesome solution, especially if you have an old PC laying around that you can load up with several drives. 
Unraid is pretty easy to install, but configuring and customizing has a little bit of a learning curve. The one main attraction of Unraid is that it's very scalable. It's very simple to add storage and random drives, with your only real limitation is that your parity drive has to be equal to or larger than any other of your storage drives. On the downside, the performance can be slow as you're limited to the speed of one single drive, unless you use an SSD cache drive. I'm still using Unraid as my primary archive and movie storage, and I've been really happy with it. It's also my main device for using and creating VMs for testing and trying things out. This brings us to the most controversial of the three solutions, which is TrueNAS. I've not been using TrueNAS very long, and I mainly started experimenting with it to better understand the ZFS storage system. Of all the storage solutions we talked about today, TrueNAS has the fastest and the most configurable system because of its use of ZFS. ZFS is very robust and very high-performing storage system, depending on, of course, how you configure it. I did a video on ZFS, which I'll link to if you want to find out more about it. I found TrueNAS to have the longest learning curve and to be the most complex to understand as there are so many different configuration options. Though ZFS is pretty awesome, I believe it's mainly tailored for business and for hardcore enthusiasts. Though ZFS is expandable, for the average user it's not practical or cost effective to expand a storage on a ZFS pool compared to solutions like Unraid. Don't get me wrong, I really like TrueNAS. In the last couple of months, I've been using it as a video editing location, and the performance has been really good. If I were using it in business, I know that I would have my data would be safe and the performance could support many users. But truthfully, my use case, it's not the first choice, as the cost to expand is pretty great. If we take a quick look at my test TrueNAS server, we can see that I used two VDAVs to create my storage pool, and further expansion would require for me to add more VDAVs. Though some QNAP units do support ZFS out of the box, most use a traditional RAID system. If you want one storage array, you'll have to have your drives be the same size, and you can only expand to the equal number of drive bays. Other things to consider is that typically they're proprietary. And if a unit goes dead or something goes wrong with it, like what just happened to me, you'll have to replace the unit or send it back to the manufacturer for repair. The learning curve for these devices is typically lower than other solutions. A subset of these NAS units, such as the ones made by Synology, um, do support a hybrid RAID, allowing you to add different sized drives, but you give up quite a bit of performance when you do that. As QNAP and TrueNAS already support ZFS, and Unraid is rumored to support it natively in an upcoming release, there's no question that ZFS is the future of storage. And in cases where you need a robust storage pools that are mobile, meaning they can be imported into other devices, there's no doubt you'll want this option in business or critical applications. That said, I still don't feel it's right for most people. Most home users don't have unlimited drive bays and piles of hard drives to keep adding pools. Though it may be robust, it comes at a price, which is storage efficiency and expandability. In terms of learning curves, in addition to having to learn ZFS, TrueNAS itself has a significant learning curve, making it less than ideal for the average home user. In contrast, Unraid uses a more traditional parity-protected array, which requires very little work on your part and you can mix and match drives in your drive pool, and it's very easy to scale storage as you need it. The operating system itself falls into the middle of these products, making it simple tasks such as setup and storage and expansion very easy, but other tasks like installing and configuring apps or VMs slightly more complicated. The other slight downside is performance. Unless you're using a caching drive, you'll be limited to the performance of a single drive, which is usually around 120, 110 megabytes per second, which is fine in a one gig network, but it will hinder a 10 gigabit network. In my opinion, Unraid is best suited for things like movies, photo collections, archives, backups. With one low cost, one-time license providing your own hardware, you can get started with very little investment. Even an old laptop with an external enclosure, you can get started with learning the software. Though it's much easier to learn than something like TrueNAS, 
in my opinion, it falls in the middle of the pack for overall ease of use, learning curve, and skill required. For me, I use Unraid for my Blu-ray collection, backups, VMs, and I've been really, really happy with it. This brings us to the NAS units, which gets its share of praise and complaints, mainly because they're more popular and they're really targeted at consumers. You either love them or you hate them. But either way, in my opinion, they offer the best choice for the average person. The reason is because they're off the shelf, they don't require any separate PC or hardware, and they're mostly easier to set up from scratch. After installing the drives, the setup is pretty easy with a guided wizard that walks you through the entire installation. In terms of performance, assuming you're using the RAID version and not the ZFS version, they are faster than Unraid, though arguably slower than something like TrueNAS. Physically, they tend to be smaller, draw less power, and can often sit somewhere on a shelf as they're headless units. The loaded software is decent, and they use an app store much like the other two. On the downside, parts of these devices are not available, so if you have to, something goes wrong, and you have to send it back to the manufacturer. One of the biggest things for me are frequent updates. As NAS units are popular, they have a larger threat surface. Consistent updates to address vulnerabilities is critical and important. And you really get more updates with, with NAS units than you do with Unraid and TrueNAS. As I use all three, I'm not actually biased to any one particular technology, but what works for me is I store all of my critical data in an encrypted volume on my NAS because I can use the built-in backup software and have redundant copies of things all over the place. I find it important to automatically back up to other devices, such as Unraid, as well as the cloud, without lots of setup. Though I love the performance of my all-SSD TrueNAS unit, I don't find it very practical or very scalable for general purpose use. As I mentioned earlier, Unraid is what I use for archiving, backups, and my Plex movie collection, and it's extremely easy to uh, increase capacity when I need it. In the end, everyone has different needs, and what works for me may not really work for you, so you'll have to ultimately pick the solution that is best suited for you and your hardware. I'll post links to various videos I did on storage backup solutions and ZFS if you're interested. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.